Okay. <coughs>
Shayam Vishnupad Puraman Sapati Prajaka Charja Stolter the Sri Srimad AC Bhakti Vedanta Shami Maraj Prabhupada Gita Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Gita Nama Charja Sridharidas Thakur Gita Prem Sakaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Gita Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Kopinat, Sham Kun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Tham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamana Mai Ki Jai, Tusi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go Prem and Ande. Hari Haribo. Hari Haribo. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And thank you, everyone, for being with us tonight. It is Friday, August 5th, 2022, at least in the United States. And you are joining us for a Srimad Bhagavatam class with His Holiness Jayadvaita Swami. And we're starting tonight with the third canto, sixth chapter, verse number 34. Very eager to hear everyone's questions and comments. We'll be posting links later that you can share with your friends. And I'm so happy you could be with us tonight, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Akendra Prabhu, and thank you for the wonderful kirtan. Welcome to all. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Ete Varna Svatarmena Yajanti Svagurum Harim Shraddhayatma Vishudhyartam Yajja All these different social divisions are born with their occupational duties and living conditions from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, for unconditional life and self-realization, one has to worship the Supreme Lord under the direction of the spiritual master. Purport. Since they are born from different parts of the body of the Supreme Lord in his gigantic form, all living entities in all parts of the entire universe are supposed to be eternal servitors of the Supreme Body. Every part of our own body, such as the mouth, hands, thighs, and legs, is meant to render service to the whole. That is their constitutional position. In subhuman life, the living entities are not conscious of this constitutional position. But in the human form of life, they're supposed to know, are supposed to know this through the system of the varnas, the social orders. As above mentioned, the brahmana is the spiritual master of all the orders of society, and thus brahminical culture, culminating in the transcendental service of the Lord, is the basic principle for purifying the soul. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshurn Militam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Pistam Stapitam Jaina Putale Swayam Rupa Kadav Mahyam Tatati Shapadantikam Pande Hung Shri Guru Shri Jatapadakamanam Shri Gurun Vaishnavanscha Shri Rupam Shagrashatam Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Satre Tam Savatutam 
Prajna Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Shahagana Lodita Sri Vishakhan Vitamstra E Krishna Kuruna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kam Shana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavan Ishwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranama Mi Hodi Priye Vansha Kulpitarupyascha Kripa Sintho Pyevacha Patita Nam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavebyo Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ete Varna Sudharmena Yajanti Swagurum Harim Shraddhayatma Vishuddhyartam Yajjata Sahavritti Pi The description we've heard as outlined for occupational divisions and they've all been they've all proceeded from the body of the Lord from the um, head from the arms um, from the abdomen from the thighs and the legs the four orders of human society appear ete varna uh, along with their prescribed duties swadharmena uh, they have their uh, duties which are all meaningless and less connected to the lord uh, dharma swanistita pumsam Vishvakshrena Katasuyat, no Gadi Adiadir Tim Shamaeva he came up. The Lord is the ultimate existing entity. And if we're not connected with that ultimate existing entity, then our existence has no meaning. Uh, we're living in a, a dream, uh, disconnected, like a hand disconnected to the body, um, from the body. Prabhupada said, you can kick it down the street. I don't care for it. Uh, as, as long as the hand is connected to the body, I'll spend thousands of dollars for it. But once it's disconnected, Prabhupada said, you can kick it down the street. I don't care for it. So the living beings have, their lives have meaning for the lower animals it's not a question, does my life mean anything? Does it not mean anything? It's not something they can think about. But the human beings are meant for this, for spiritual realization, for understanding their relationship with the personality of Godhead. Now, In, in conditional life, conditioned life, the soul is under the impression that he can become the Lord of the universe. He can become the Lord of the universe. And the last point of this misconception is to think oneself the supreme. The foolish conditioned soul does not take into account that the supreme cannot be conditioned by maya or illusion. If the Supreme were to become conditioned by illusion, where would be his supremacy? In that case, Maya or illusion would be the Supreme. 
Therefore, because the living entities are conditioned, they cannot be supreme. The, this is essentially a killer argument against the Mayavad philosophy. The conditioned souls want to lord it over the material energy. Uh, and then if some fortunate conditioned soul becomes interested in self-realization, he's still mm, subject to the illusion that he somehow is the supreme entity. There's only uh, Eka Brahma to Tiyanasti. There's only one absolute truth, not a second. And therefore, I can't exist separately. I must be identical with the supreme. Aham Brahmasmi. I'm the absolute truth. That's how the Mayabad thinking goes. But if I'm the absolute truth, why am I being kicked by Maya? How is it that the absolute, and then their answer is, well, I'm, I'm really God, but I've uh, forgotten that I'm God. But what kind of God is that, and under whose influence uh, is it that the, the Supreme forgets its supremacy? Uh, as Prabhupada indicates here, if, if we're uh, under illusion, then, uh, and, and we're God, then somehow illusion is superior to God. So these are the, the contradictions into which the Mayavadis fall with their arguments that somehow the living entities are, are supreme and they just have to uh, remember or, or uh, realize <laughs> this and everything will be all right. Uh, no, if we're conditioned by Maya, uh, which we are, then we can't be God. The actual position of the conditioned soul is explained in this verse. All the conditioned souls are impure due to contact with the material energy in three modes of nature, tree beer, gunamayar, pavar, abhisarvamidam, jagat mohitam. We're bewildered by the three modes of nature. That's our present position. And therefore, we don't realize that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, it is necessary that they purify themselves under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master, who not only is a Brahmin by qualification, must also, but must also be a Vaishnava. The only self-purifying process mentioned herein is to worship the Lord under the recognized method, under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master. That is the natural way of purification, and no other method is recommended as bona fide. The other methods of purification may be helpful to come to this come to this stage of life. But ultimately, one has to come to this last point before he attains actual perfection. Bhagavad Gita confirms this truth as follows. Bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan mam prapadyate vasudeva sarvamiti Sa Mahatma Sudur Labaha. It's interesting. It appears uh, that Srila Prabhupada, we, we see here, Yajanti Swagurum Harim. It, it appears that Prabhupada must be reading uh, Sagurum uh, rather than Swagurum. There may be an alternative reading here. Sagurum. Uh, would be along with the spiritual master. And Swagurum Harim, it would looks to me like it means that Hari is, is the Supreme Guru. Uh, so he worships the Supreme Guru, the personality of Godhead. But uh, Swagurum, along with the spiritual master, uh, in any case, and I don't claim to be the, the Sanskrit scholar, um, but in any case, um, 
this is fundamentally true that to worship the supreme personality of godhead properly uh, one requires the guidance of the spiritual master for most of us even to understand that there is a supreme personality of godhead and that we ought to worship him and that we're not him uh, all this requires a spiritual master we're so bewildered by the material energy uh, and by our own speculations or speculations we've adopted by hearing from others that we're confused uh, thoroughly confused uh, but by hearing from a bona fide spiritual master we can understand our position that we're uh, servants of the supreme uh, Prabhupada asks that question of Giri Rajmaraj when Giri Rajmaraj first met him at an engagement at Brandeis University. So do you want to be God or do you want to serve God? No. Do you want to be God or do you want to serve God? So the general project is that either tacitly or overtly we want to be God but by the grace of the bona fide spiritual master we can understand that we're meant to serve God uh, and uh, this is the way to purify our activities by serving Shraddhaya with faith and devotion uh, one uh, purifies oneself uh, one purifies one's life and one becomes properly uh, situated uh, because we're born from the supreme personality of godhead and our prescribed duties are also come from the lord or uh, because we're parts of the lord because we're born from him our prescribed duties are also born from him. Uh, if we're, uh, if I'm born the son of some person, um, a father and mother, then I have some duties toward the father and mother. Uh, it, it comes with the birth. So if we're reduced from the body of the personality of Godhead, then we have some duties uh, for serving the personality of Godhead. Or really our whole duty is to serve the personality of Godhead. So Bahunam Janmana Mante Ganavan Mantapajite. After many, many lifetimes, uh, the person who is actually situated in all of Ganavan, Mam Prapajite, surrenders to um, Krishna. The there's a comment by Srila Vishnath Shrakabharti Thakur that because we're born of the personality of Godhead, uh, along with our prescribed duties or our mm, occupations uh, the brahman and his occupation is born of the lord the kshatriya the vaisha every living being or all the human beings are born from the lord along with their occupational duties and therefore he says don't worry about your livelihood uh, the riti p uh, what is that looking back yes jata sahavriti b we're all born along with our prescribed duties uh, along with our means of livelihood uh, so riti b means along with our means of livelihood so uh, chakravarti Thakur says uh, so we don't have to worry about our uh, our means of livelihood we simply have to act in devotional service according to our prescribed duties and the Lord will take care of that. Okay. Tirumala has her hand up. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, so we're all learning how to serve um, Krishna under the direction of the spiritual master. But then when we go back to the spiritual world and then we're in our eternal relationship with Krishna, then uh, like, how do we still have a relationship with our spiritual master? That you'll find out when you go. That you'll find out when you go. At the moment, we don't have to worry about that. 
let's let's go there and then we'll find out the rest. Vijay Krishna, what is the okay? Could someone uh, Vijay Krishna Prabhu, could you read that for me? Yes, Maharaj. Question number one, what is the symptom that shows that I am already purified, free from the influence of the material modes? Incessant, uninterrupted worship of the Lord? Hmm. That's actually the sign that we're purified. Uh, if we're otherwise, what is that in the... Uh, Bhagavatam. Hmm. Avishuddha Bhutaya. Ye ye arivindaksha vimukta manina. Otherwise, we may think ourselves liberated because we know that we're not this body, because we know that we're spirit, soul, hum, brahmasmi, uh, because we've hmm, detached ourselves from material engagements. But uh, Avishuddha Bhutaya, even though we may think ourselves liberated, uh, until we come to the point of devotional service, our uh, consciousness is not mm, completely pure. So the sign of real purification is mam prapajyate. One engages in the service of Krishna. Sarshati. Pranam, Paramputya Maharaj. Um, I wanted to share um, a meeting that my father had with an old school friend. It was very interesting. I, of course, got chastised severely um, while I tried to interject and say a couple of things. But the gist of the, that conversation was this friend hadn't seen my father for a very long time, but had heard that my father uh, spends most of his time, in fact, all day chanting. So he was, first of all, one point he asked my father, he said, oh, don't you get bored with chanting the same words over and over again. So my father said to him, why don't you try it and you will find the answer yourself because whatever I may say, it's not going to it's not going to um, resonate with you um, until you chant those words over and over and over. It might think like it's a repetition, but the joy and the happiness that you get, no matter how much I describe it until you do it. It's, it's not going to be so meaningful. Then his second thing he said to my father was, well, when you're chanting, I'm sure um, your mind is going here, there, uh, wherever, you know, it's not focused completely on um, Krishna. So my father's like, yes, I'm, I'm such a deplorable soul here that I'm chanting with all offenses and I can only depend on my Guru Maharaj that somehow or another through his mercy, um, you know, Krishna can accept that all the flaws, all the faults, all the offenses I'm chanting with, um, somehow he can still accept me. Um, and then he said, but my father said, here's the thing, even um, if I'm spending eight hours chanting with offenses, during those eight hours, I'm um, forcing my tongue um, in a, to say the, the words that pleases Krishna and my Guru Maharaj. So I'm not used, at least for that duration of time, my tongue is not talking all nonsense. I have stopped the tongue from talking all nonsense for that duration of time so um, even if I am chanting with all offenses I can at least know that um, during that duration of time I am trying to please Krishna and my Guru Maharaj of course I interjected and said you know why does life have to be so difficult sometimes nothing comes easy everything all these hurdles we have to go over and my father looked at me and he said you know we are such vile creatures Krishna has given us everything, Guru Maharaj, everything we have got, and we're just vile creatures. We do nothing but whine all day long. <laughs> Our wants never stop. Our needs never stop. And all we do is just whine. Take a good look at ourselves. We're vile creatures. He said, sometimes we have to scratch our heads and wonder, how can we be part and parcel of Krishna? How can we be? We're so vile. But he said, here's the thing, we are part and parcel of Krishna. So we, you know, this whining, all our wants, needs, all of this thing is just never ending. Stop it. And if life was that easy and that simple, do you think you'd stop and even look at Krishna? Would you take out the time um, of your, you know, from your busy, busy day, wanting, desiring um, to even look at Krishna, even to go to Krishna. So it's better we have a very, very difficult, tough life because at least from that point of view, you will be forced to go to Krishna somehow or another with, you know, 
with humility, folded hands and pray and whatever difficulty you're having to, for him to help you get out of it. You're going to him and that's his mercy. Thank you, Maharaj. Oh, thank you. And thank you to your father. Such uh, wonderful instructions. Anything else here? Okay. Etat pshatar bhagavato daiva karamatma rupinaha kashadhyad upakartum yoga maya balodayam. O Vidura, who can estimate or measure the transcendental time, work, and potency of the gigantic form? manifested by the internal potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Purport. The froggish philosophers may go on with their mental speculations on the subject matter of the virat, the gigantic form exhibited by the Yogamaya internal potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but factually, no one can measure such a vast exhibition. In Bhagavad Gita, Arjun, the recognized devotee of the Lord, says, Aneka bahudara vaktra netram vashamitam sarvato nantarupam nantam namadhyam napunastavadim vashami vishveshwara Vishvarupa. O my Lord, O gigantic Vishvarupa form, O master of the universe, I see innumerable hands, bodies, mouths, and eyes in all directions, and they are all unlimited. I cannot find the end of this manifestation nor do I see the middle, nor the beginning. And the interestingly for Srila Prabhupada's point here, uh, the next verse is also relevant. Let's find that. Kiritinam Gadinam Chakrinam Cha Tejo Rajim Sarvato Deepti Mantam Pashamitam Durnirikam Samanta. Dibanalarka Dutim Aprameyam. So this Aprameya word, uh, the I see you with so many uh, helmets and uh, clubs uh, and chakras. Tejo Rasim Sarvato Deepti Mantam with effulgence spreading in all directions. Uh, and Aprameyam, your opulence is unlimited uh, up, up, and immeasurable. Aprameya. Uh, we can't measure the extent of the glories of the Lord. Uh, even great cosmic distances can be measured in light years and uh, what have you. But the mm, extent of the glories of the Lord, the power of the Lord, the mm, vastness of the Lord is beyond measurement. And that was shown to Arjuna. Bhagavad Gita was specifically spoken to Arjun, and the Vishrup was exhibited before him at his request. He was awarded the specific eyes to see this Vishvarupa. Yet although he was able to see the Lord's innumerable hands and mouths, 
who is unable to see him completely. Since Arjuna was unable to estimate the length and breadth of the potency of the Lord, who else would be able to do so? One may only indulge in miscalculation, like the frog philosopher. The frog philosopher wanted to estimate the length and breadth of the Pacific Ocean by his experience of a well three cubic feet large. And thus he began to puff himself up to become as big as the Pacific Ocean. But at last he burst and died by this process. This story is applicable to the mental philosophers who under the illusion of the Lord's external energy indulge in estimating the length and breadth of the Supreme Lord. The best path is to become a cool-headed, submissive devotee of the Lord. Try to hear about the Lord from the bona fide spiritual master and thus serve the Lord in transcendental loving service as suggested in the previous verse. The, now let's go on, backing up here. Etat kshatar bhagavato daiva karmatma rupinaha. The Lord's in universal form described in this portion of the Bhagavatam is described as Daiva Karma Atma Rupina, uh, the uh, form of transcendental uh, work, time, nature, uh, karma's work, yeah. and Daiva is, uh, is destiny or time. Uh, so the uh, vastness people can who can figure out time who can figure out the complexities of uh, the the workings of the material um, cosmic manifestation who can measure these things uh, but tiny conditioned souls try to figure out everything by their limited intelligence and they just become stubborn speculators uh, they can't really understand. But a submissive devotee can understand. Shraddhaya, uh, Upa, Kartum, uh, even a, a, we have to understand the Lord by transcendental, uh, a transcendental submissive attitude and not by the propensity to try to measure everything by our own intelligence. Uh, Yoga Maya uh, Belodian, the form of the Lord is manifested uh, by Yoga Maya. The, someone may say, well, wait a second, no, we're talking about the universal form, uh, the form of the cosmic manifestation, and that's manifest by Mahamaya, by the material energy. Why do you say uh, yoga maya? So different answers can be given. One is that uh, the Mahamaya is also part of yoga maya. Yoga maya means the spiritual energy of the Lord. And Mahamaya is a portion of uh, yoga maya. The uh, yes, of the spiritual energy. Um, and probably gives the example that the, the state treasury is one, it's all uh, state money, but some portion is designated as the prison budget. But the prison budget is also part of the state affairs, not that because it's in prison it's somehow or other, because uh, it's spent in the prison, it's divorced from the state. Uh, it's also part of the um, 
energy of the state. So the Mahamaya is a manifestation of, of yoga maya. From another point of view also, it's by the spiritual energy of the Lord or the spiritual grace of the Lord that we're able to see the transcendental form of the Lord uh, by seeing the um, cosmic manifestation or seeing the universal form. Because we're, we're in conditioned life, so what can we see? Uh, we see um, hmm, the sky, we see the rivers, we see uh, mountains, or we, maybe we think of various planetary systems, or we see different classes of human beings with their different engagements. And here, by the grace of Yoga Maya or the Lord's spiritual uh, mercy, we're being trained to see all of this as a manifestation of the personality of Godhead. Um, so in this way, our consciousness becomes purified, our engagements become purified, everything becomes purified by being connected with the personality of Godhead. So these are the workings of Yoga Maya or the Lord's divine mercy. Hmm. And gradually, as we proceed in Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll see that this uh, universal form of the personality of Godhead is a manifestation of the eternally existing transcendental form of Krishna and Vrindavan. In that way, our understanding of this world becomes purified. And when we come to the point of approaching Krishna, the personality of Godhead, we're aware that he's not simply a young boy playing with young girls or playing in a village with cows, but he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead from whom the entire cosmic manifestation proceeds. So this is, these are all workings of uh, yoga maya, the Lord's spiritual energy. And all of this can be understood uh, by the devotional process under the guidance of the bona fide spiritual master. The parallel can be drawn and Prabhupada draws it in several places between seeing the universal form and seeing the deity of the Lord. One might also argue that the deity of the Lord is uh, just a manifestation of the material energy. But the material energy is also uh, part of the Lord's energy, and there's no difference between the Lord and his energy. So the deity in the, in the temple is also a spiritual manifestation of the Lord. One has to see uh, with eyes of you know, purified by devotional service under proper guidance. Are there some other comments or questions here? Yes. Vijay Krishna, would you read that for me, please, Prabhu? Uh, yes, uh, Maharaj. Question number two. Is it that to try to estimate or measure that which cannot be estimated or measured is a sign of my envy and rebellion and even a sign of how far my stupidity can go against the Lord. And by stupidity, I do mean, quote, lack of intelligence, end quote. Actually, the scientists think themselves as very intelligent because of their investigation related to the universal form of the Lord. But today's verses are establishing that they are no better than stupid, is it not? It is. When you were talking about stubbornness and rebellion, I was thinking, no, stupidity. And then you read it, stupidity, yes. The, you know, the, the scientists may be expert in, in the workings of the material energy and you know, getting things to work, um, crafting things and inventing things. But that's not a qualification at all for metaphysical understanding. They're expert in physical affairs, 
uh, to some extent. Uh, and so far, uh, even physical affairs, you know, they get their equations right, perhaps, but then they don't realize the consequences of what they come up with, uh, or they become entangled in the consequences of what they come up with. They cause more trouble than they realize by what they come up with. Uh, that's part of it. And then the other part of it is that metaphysically, uh, their mundane qualifications don't help them. So they come up with various theories, which um, are, are, as you said, stupid or silly. You know, the, the frog in the well who tries to measure the Pacific Ocean is ultimately a joke. You know, he's, he's, he's a cartoon, he's a fool. What can he understand? Twice as big as my well, five times as big as my well. So the scientists who think that they're going to understand everything by some sort of materialistic approach of boiling everything down to its uh, original material constituents are uh, missing missing the point. And they they you know like I'm thinking of one theory panspermia. Why is there life throughout the universe, uh, throughout the earth? Well, it, uh, it must have come from other planets. You know, these spores of life must have emanated from other planets, and that explains how we have life on Earth. Yeah, okay. Um, your, your theory doesn't explain where the spores came from, uh, except other planets, but how did they get it? You've just removed the... the the problem one step that you're going to be in an ultimate in ultimate in a uh, an infinite regress uh, this must have come from another planet that must have come from another planet uh, but the Bhagavatam Janmadhyasya is right on the target of what's the ultimate cause uh, so if the scientists pick up these hints from Srimad Bhagavatam then uh, their consciousness can become purified and they can become perfect scientists Tulsi Priya. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please examine my basis. Yesterday, um, during class, uh, somehow we got on the uh, topic of Bhagavad Marg and Pancharachakrivity. And when yeah, I was. I'm sorry, you got, you got um, uh, clouded out there by a, a, a drop in connectivity. Oh, you, were, okay. you were discussing what last yesterday? Um, the Bhagavat Marg and Pancharatrika Vidhi. Ah. And I had done a little research on that and I found um, a, a lecture that Prabhupada had given and mm -hmm. he was saying how Bhagavat Marg supports Pancharatrika and Pancharatrika supports Bhagavat Marg and it's the sort of a division of the nine processes, Bhagavat being Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smarnam and, and Pancharatrika being the other processes. Anyways, to get to the point, um, he said... But of course, the Pancharachika Vidhi is recommended in the second canto that another Pancharachika Vidhi is worshiping the gigantic form of the Lord. And that was news to me. And now you just mentioned it um, today that, you know, that that worship of, you know, Pancharachika is also the worship of the universal form and comparing it to the deity being material or a, a manifestation of the material energy. So I thought that was interesting. But I had never, I had never thought of Pancharachika Vidya as being worship of the universal form. Mm. This presents a whole um, line of of approach for those who are interested in ecology, and uh, yeah, for those who are interested in ecology, which has become, you know, sort of the go to interest for those who are. Uh, perhaps aspiring for something higher than ordinary pedestrian activities. So I meet so many young people. Uh, yes, I'm studying ecology uh, because it's seen as something um, with some meaning to it, uh, not just a job, but something that will uh, make life better. Uh, so the, but the entire ecological movement is um, imperfect until it's connected with the personality of Godhead. 
it just becomes an arbitrary means of exploitation. Uh, the I remember we were in San Diego on maybe the first or second Earth Day. Uh, and now Earth Day has become like a big, I guess, global event. Um, but, you know, it started off as something quite idealistic to, to celebrate the Earth and ecological values. And we were at Balboa Park in San Diego. And, uh, you know, it was just another ordinary event with hot dog sellers and, uh, you know, anyone who thought they could make a buck cashing in on Earth Day. Um, I heard the former, I was at a, um, an event in Princeton where the former CIA, head of the CIA was making a case uh, for uh, the, the importance of our invading Afghanistan and sort of weave that into a theme about Earth Day. So somehow or other, Earth Day becomes just another day for trying to exploit the Earth and satisfy our senses. Uh, but then there are those who are uh, deep ecologists, as it's sometimes said, who uh, look for you know, a deeper meaning, greater meaning in these things. Uh, and they can be guided toward this concept of the universal form that everything in existence has divinity, um, but not the sort of vague, diffuse divinity sometimes attributed to um, our world, as, as the saying goes, but um, that we can envision uh, the cosmos as a, as a great person. Uh, you know, we, we like to be visionaries, and, or perhaps we like to meditate on some greater truth. So here's uh, guidance for us that yes, meditate on this, on the cosmos, because you're not ready for meditation on Krishna and Vrindavan and Krishna stealing butter and Krishna playing with the cowherd boys or being dragged through the mud of the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. You're not ready for that. You'll think that's all uh, stories or what have you. But you can meditate on what's before your very eyes. Meditate on the cosmic manifestation. But uh, take this form of guided meditation for seeing the cosmos as being a, a like a person. Uh, and they do that. They have their Gaia hypothesis and so on. So there's some willingness to try to envision uh, the, the world or the cosmos as in terms of some sort of non-mechanical uh, truth. So the Bhagavatam is like once again ahead of the game and giving a whole picture of um, our, our environment in terms of a, 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 a great meditative scheme or a, a metaphysical picture, uh, this, this great picture of the, the, the universe as a, as, a, as a great person, Virat um, Purusha, cosmic person. And just by meditating on that, uh, we can consider our own position in relation to that cosmic person. We can consider the resources of the material energy, the stars, the planets, the earth, the mountains, the, the, the rivers, the oceans, uh, the trees, the plants, the animals. We can start to see everything in relation to that uh, great cosmic person. That will purify our consciousness. That will purify our consciousness. And that will can bring about a change in the world as well as in our, our own lives. So for those who want to uh, say something relevant uh, about uh, ecology or to those involved in ecology, this second canto offers uh, profound understanding. 
Yeah, thank you, Tulsi Priya. For thank you so much, Marge. That was really uh, a lot of food for thought there. Mm -hmm. Hi, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Rudas, could you uh, tell me what's there in the chat box? Can you hear me, Maharaj? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, first of all, Dandavats. And can we, I wrote, can we understand from your discussion of submissiveness um, that it seems to be a sublime gift of causeless mercy that the stubborn mental speculator is not given access to. Um, you were giving the example of someone who was, or maybe it was Prabhupada in the purport who was saying that the mental speculator is completely addicted to uh, exploring everything on his own terms. Um, The mental speculators need to examine everything by his own mind to become, uh, it, 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 is it causeless mercy to enable them to become submissive? Does it involve one being convincingly defeated as Lord Chaitanya so soundly defeated Sarvabhama Bhattacharya that he became stunned and speechless? Um, obviously, that's the Lord's transcendental pastime, but does the uh, garden variety mental speculator have to be shaken down to his roots in that way for him to stop his, or, or, or adjust his speculative addiction? Well, let's start with something less, less dramatic. Uh, let the mental speculator uh, start with a little humility. How can he get humility, uh, he can think of his own position in regard to the cosmos. And we find that scientists are sometimes willing to do that. They, they pause from their speculations to contemplate the vastness of space, the, the vastness of time, the um, wonder of how the cosmic manifestation works and if they think along those lines with humility uh, then they may uh, make some progress amanitva the beginning of knowledge is humility amanitva adambitva where the lord describes the the process of knowledge 13th chapter uh, the first item is amanitva, humility. So who am I in relation to this cosmos? You know, if I think about how much time I, got, I occupy, how much space I occupy, how meaningful my existence is against the background of millions of planets and vast expanses of space, time beyond calculation then I have to think that I'm really very small. Um, I have to think that I'm really very small. And the, the scientist can, I mean, if he's a, a little fortunate, can be uh, asked to, to think of the universe as a great person. And where are you in relation to that person? Just as we sometimes show people the picture of the changing bodies and say, well, where do you think you are in that picture? Well, I guess I'm, so where are you in relation to this universal form? Um, well, I think maybe I'm on the head because the, the heads are the, the head is where thought goes on. So it could be suggested that, all right, you're one of the thinkers of human society. So you belong to the head, but the head, how, how big is the head compared to the, the uh, when we identify the body as the universe, the, every part of the body is, of the Lord is unlimited. Uh, and he has not only one head, but uh, thousands of heads. 
thousands of arms, thousands of legs. Um, so you can think in different ways uh, along these lines of the, of the universe being like a cosmic person. And all right, you take it as a theoretical construct from uh, an ancient civilization, but there's some wisdom there. So just think about your own position in relation to this cosmic person. Um, that provides an opportunity for him for um, humility. And humility is the beginning of knowledge. Then again, uh, even with, uh, with that uh, being shaken up may be required. <laughs> Or maybe helpful to just get, uh, well, either kicked in the head or in one way or another, uh, shaken up. Which, yes, is Krishna's mercy. And there's a last comment from Praveen, because we're really at the end of time. Um, but Kendra Prabhu, could you tell us what's there? Sure. And, and there is even one above, a brief one from Murari Gupta Prabhu that I thought was nice. Also... Uh -huh. Marai Prabhu says, panspermia seems to be an attempt to cover up the failure to create life on this planet by saying it could have originated on another planet with different conditions to Earth. They move the goalposts out of the stadium to save face and hold on to their positions. <laughs> Shy. Nice. <laughs> yes. And then uh, Praveen Pr Prabhu says, uh, the previous environment minister of India challenged Radhanath Maharaj, Swamiji, what are you doing for the environment? And to which Maharaj replied, we are cleaning the ecology of the heart until the internal ecology is clean. No matter what one does, the ecology outside can never be clean. And quote, the minister could understand the deep reply, but knowing her limitations replied, you are doing very good work, Swamiji. Please continue the internal cleaning and we shall do the outer cleaning. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Wonderful reply from Radhanath Parish. A typical reply from the environment. Minister. Thank you. Well, thank you to all. And uh, what's happening in the Kirtan department this evening? Uh, 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 Maharaj. I was invited to, to chant. Jai. May I? Please. Yes. <laughs> Very short because we are, we are already two minutes after the time. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Om Vishnu Pad Purnaman Supri Prajakachar Jashto Tarasat Shri Shimad AC Bhakti Vedanta Shami Miraj Prabhupada Ki Jai Anantakoti Vaishnavan Ki Jai 
Nama charges Sri Dharidas Thakur ki jai. Prem sakaho Shri Krishna Chaitan Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gokopinath Sham Kun Radha Kunigiri Govardhan ki jai. Vrindavan Tham ki jai. Navadip Tham ki jai. Jagannath Puri ki jai. Ganga Mahi ki jai. Jamana Mahi ki jai, Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Todas las glorias los devotos reinidos. Gaur Premanande. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Gurudev. Thank you, Lakshmana. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna it sounded like Guru Das Prabhu. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Ah, it is. Thank you, everyone, Hare for being Hare. here on your. Friday evening time. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Jai. Jai Dvaita Maharaj ki jai. Jai. Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Jai. Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari Bhakta Vrinda.